Hey YouTube, how's it going? Kevin Cleary with a knife video. Today I have a Zero Tolerance 0801. This is my Zero Tolerance 0801. You can see right away that it's not uh, factory finishes. Um, there's a little bit of a story behind this knife, so I'll tell you some of that later on, other than just to say, but for, for introduction, let's just say I was interested in this knife, but I wasn't sure how interested. Okay, so one came up that had had sort of a pimp job done on it, but it wasn't that well done, and the guy knew it, and so uh, we negotiated and I, and I came to a price that was pretty fair, and so I got this for a really, really good deal, and I knew it was a project knife coming in, and I wanted to try the 801, uh, and so it worked out pretty good for me in that way. Okay, uh, now, <coughs> The 801, of course, is a Todd Rexford design, and this has been, you know, I don't know, it, it's it's a pretty cool design, but it's maybe not all the way where it should have been, in my mind. Okay, and I'll talk about that as we kind of go through, but on the, the face of it, it's sort of, this is a knife to me that doesn't know where it wants to be. It's sort of trying to be a hard use knife, but it's trying to be a gentleman's knife, and it ends up falling somewhere in between that is really hard to put you know uh, your finger on okay so uh, let's zoom in and tell you what I've done to this knife and then we'll probably zoom back out and do some comparisons and stuff like that okay so let's come in and get a closer look why is my remote not wanting to listen there we go sorry about that so all right, there you go. You should be able to see the knife okay there. Now, what happened when this knife came to me, it was a pretty dark anodization on the titanium. The blade had been acid, acid stone washed, okay, and so had the pocket clip. Now, the acid stone wash was not that well done either on the blade or on the clip. In fact, on the clip, there was still original paint left on the clip. So to me, it's kind of important to get that totally stripped off before you move forward with the rest of your job. But anyway, um, what I did was refinish the blade and I finished the primary bevel to uh, I think about a 1500 grit polished finish and then the flats here are much coarser maybe I don't know 400 grit so that you can still see the grind lines I did polish the pocket clip as well to the same finish I can't remember for sure what what grit I went to on the flats here, but I do know I went to the same grit here and here so that there'd be a bit of a, that would tie the knife together a little bit. Okay, I've also polished the bolsters on the um, scales and I did re-anodize this guys. I just basically, and all I did when I re-anodized it, my, what ended up happening and what my goal was, was just to make it a little more even and that's all that's essentially what I achieved and that was perfect okay now it's just a bluey bronze everywhere instead of being all over the place which is what it was before um, I've also polished the tops of these grooves to create a bit of a contrast okay so you can see that there's a bit more so that these these grind lines so that the lines in these grooves stand out a little bit more so that's the work that I did and let me just tell you this guys before we kind of move on with the rest of the video um, if you, I, I recommend getting a knife and doing something like this because one, it's a lot of fun. Number two, it gets you in the head of the, the work that's going into a knife. So that when you're buying knives after that, you kind of have a sense for what it takes to get those knives the way they look. Now, obviously, um, most of the knives myself and maybe a lot of you are buying are from a factory rather than you know hand finished by a knife maker, but even going through the processes yourself you get you get a sense for what kind of work is involved what kind of processes need to be done all right so let's go ahead and back this out and uh, let me say that uh, one other thing before we move on if you are going to if you're thinking of hey I'd like to try to pimp a knife probably a knife in Elmax is probably is not your best first choice because I will tell you working on Elmax kind of sucks. At least it did for me. It was really, really a lot of work. Uh, it's an abrasion resistant steel. So here you are trying to uh, work away on it and it, it's fighting you every step of the way. Okay, so um, Elmax maybe is not the best pick. In fact, the titanium was much easier to work with and polish and finish than the, the blade itself. Okay, the other thing is I will tell you that like on, you know, if you've ever watched an Edge Pro Apex video or something like that, you need to know if you're going to do something like this, you can't go to the finish you want right away. 
okay you have to work through the steps so you know if you got some sandpaper or a grinding wheel or whatever you've got you're gonna have to go you know from 300 to 400 to 600 to a thousand to wherever your your final goal is is you whatever the final goal you're aiming for okay um, just kind of keep that in the back of your mind so now let's now that you kind of know what I've done to this uh, and, and I'll tell you this I'm quite pleased with the way it's turned out it's about what I when I bought the knife it's about what I was envisioning getting uh, when I was done all the work although it was a lot of work and I've had this knife for quite a long time before I was finally able to just devote a considerable considerable amount of time to getting done what I wanted to get done okay so now that you kind of have all that stuff stuff out of the way let's talk about the knife itself okay this knife is what I would call a medium folder it's eight and a quarter inches so the same as a pair of two the same as um, you know a hinderer the same as a 0562 and lots of other knives uh, the weight on this is a little hefty it's eight point or five point eight five ounces not eight ounces but five point eight five so almost six ounces for a fairly small knife um, it's reasonably sized to fit in your pocket it does pocket really well and and carries pretty comfortably okay no big issue there uh, the blade design and then well really the knife design is a Todd Rexford design so he's known for sort of simple straight clean lines and the knife does and I tried to preserve that in the work that I did to it uh, and so the knife does you know represent Todd Rexford pretty well I will say that I prefer this in the S110V version where the, this is just a flat uh, slab of titanium or of course if you're familiar with the 808 which is another Rexford design uh, that style is a little more appealing to me okay uh, so let's see have we missed anything oh yeah the blade length is three and a half inches that's probably important to know three and a half inches on the blade and four and three quarter inches on the handle okay uh, so that's what we're dealing with for size and weight and let me get a couple of quick comparisons here before we move on. Uh, one knife that I often, I don't always do this on camera guys, but I almost always compare every knife I get to the Cold Steel Recon 1 just because it's a very capable, durable knife. It's large and it achieves an exceptionally good weight for its size. Okay, so the the... Uh, Recon 1 is quite a bit lighter than this even though you can see it's a lot bigger and of course it is it is marketed and, and most people buy it as a hard use knife and that's of course where ZT uh, aims as well so that's the uh, that's the Recon 1 so that gives you because this this is a knife that people a lot of people own a lot of people are familiar with so that should give you a good size comparison um, the 0562 which is extremely comparable like these guys are pretty much direct competitors okay um, both of them weigh close to the same now this is quite a bit lighter uh, all you know more than half an ounce lighter and you can really notice that in hand it is a little more ergonomic okay but that's that's for a different discussion maybe a comparison video um, the size though is exactly the same three and a half inch blade three and a half inch blade um, and eight and a quarter inches overall okay so if you're familiar with the 0562 then you know kind of what size the 801 is one last comparison just because it's a, a very uh, well-known blade here is the pair uh, spider Pro military in titanium okay and now the reason I'm showing you this is because these knives weigh close to the same amount and that's one of the things that I think is a drawback. You've got a short, little hefty knife here, and my preference is to get as much size as I can out of my weight. So when I can get a knife of this size that weighs nearly the same, uh, to me, that's, that's a bit of a problem. It's not the end of the world, and I carry lots of other heavy knives, but it is a bit of a problem. By the way, should be pointed out that this knife, and, and a number of zero tolerances that are coming around, are sort of they're almost using custom knife designs and philosophies and materials and because of that like custom knives generally speaking are very very heavy okay production knives are the ones that try to keep the weight down 
uh, custom makers don't care a thing about that. They're working toward uh, a certain look or a certain role, and often custom knives are quite heavy. So if you're a custom knife guy, or if you want to be a custom knife guy, but maybe can't afford it, like lots of people, then this might, then that weight is not as big of a deal, okay? And that's something that does need to be said about a lot of knives. When you're looking at a knife that's sort of a, a copy of a custom, if they've done really, if they've gone, if they've very closely modeled the, the knife after the custom, then you're gonna expect a little heavier than what you'd normally see, okay? So, uh, this knife is just a little heavy for its size. It's not as bad as some that we've looked at, okay? I've, I've looked at some knives before that I think are just way too heavy for their size. That's not so with this one. It's just a bit, bit hefty for what you're getting, okay? <clears throat> so, you've seen the other knives that I think compare well to it. Uh, we talked about the size and weight. Let's go ahead and talk about the blade. This is a drop point blade with a fairly high flat grind. You can see that there is this top swedge here. Um, of course, I know that my finish is going to look a little different than the ZT factory finish. Uh, by the way, when it came to me uh, acid stone washed, you could not see any of the factory logoing from ZT. Once I started to polish away that uh, that acid stone wash finish, then you can sort of see if it catches the light right, you can see the zero tolerance, you can see the 801 Rexford on this side. It's just very faint, okay? So that stuff has kind of come through. And actually, I really like this knife without the labeling. I think it looks really sharp, and I kind of wish ZT would would think about doing something different along those lines. Alright, so uh, kind of moving on, uh, this blade is a flat grind and it's fairly thick material and, and this this blade profile okay is pretty common if you take a lot of zt's and you look right here you'll see that they do carry a lot of width and that's in an effort to be tough and durable and that's good okay now um what i think what i've got to give zt credit for in their blade designs is that i've never up to this point i'm not saying one doesn't exist but up to this point i've never had a zt that couldn't cut Okay, I've had ZTs that were a little thicker and maybe didn't cut as well as, or weren't, didn't slice as well as say, you know, a, a military or a paramilitary or one of those other, you know, leaf shaped, full flat ground spider coves. But I've never had one where I went to, to slice foam book paper or shave hair and it just wouldn't do it because the edge geometry was that poor. Um, I've had other knives like that but not a zero tolerance. So I've got to give zero tolerance credit for really doing a good job, just in general, of striking that balance between really tough, durable blades. And this is a tough, durable blade. It's thick, okay, it's, it carries a lot of that thickness right out near the tip, uh, and yet, when you go to cut something with this, it still cuts it, which is, of course, what we want out of our knives, or at least what I want out of my knives. I'm not carrying a pocket pry tool, I'm carrying a pocket knife. Now I know there are those who want a pocket pry tool and that's totally your prerogative, okay? So this blade does do a pretty good job of balancing strength and cutting power, okay? And, and I'll give credit for that. Let's move on to lockup and deployment because many people have commented that this is one of the better flipping, better moving uh, ZTs and I will not will not disagree with that at all. This knife is impressive. It was impressive even when it was you know in the condition it first came to me and it had a bit of dirt. I've since cleaned it up, I've oiled it and once I cleaned it up and oiled this pivot it became even more amazing and now if you watch it it is very very smooth and very very fast and easy to flip. Uh, notice that, what other, oh, I guess I only have the, the 0562 is the other flipper here. Uh, notice the size on this flipper, and you can get a lot of leverage in and really get that blade to come out. Now I have far less leverage here, but notice I can flip this blade faster. It's amazing how well they have done the action on this knife. It's very, very smooth, falls closed. It's, it's you know, those who have commented on how good the action is on this knife are not joking. They, it, it's very, very impressive. Okay, guys, won't deny that for one second. Now it does have ball bearing pivot. Um, they're caged ball bearings like what you see on a lot of ZTs and, and they work fine. You guys know that I'm sort of on the fence about that. It's not the best thing ever, but it's not the end of the world either. Okay, so 
uh, it is on a pivot and it does it, it moves very very nicely okay I'm not going to deny that for a second this is Maybe not the smoothest. My 0560 is extremely good, but other than the 0560, this is about my my nicest um, flipping zero tolerance. This has about the best action of any of the ZTs that I own. Okay, very very good. Uh, the lock is of course a titanium frame lock, and so you've got the lock bar here. The cutter is on the outside, which I do think adds strength. Um, this this dimension here is a weak point on all titanium frame locks, just the nature of the beast. Uh, this does have something that I do like. And this is a combination um, lock bar insert and over travel stop. Okay, so this piece of steel does extend just back behind the frame a little bit, so that if I'm unlocking this knife, I stop right about there. I can't go any further. Which is, a, which is really, really good. And I've made that comment with other knives before because you do see knives that have both an over-travel stop down here and an over-travel stop on the um, lock bar insert. And you kind of go, why? Okay. Um, so this knife does have both of those and it's done with the one piece of steel, which is really, really nice. I do like that. And I do in general like, although again, it's not a deal breaker. It's not like I'm going to be like, oh, I'm not buying that knife. It doesn't have a stainless steel lock bar insert. Yeah, no, I don't think that's that's absolutely critical. And there are lots of knives being made that don't have them, and that's not an issue at all for me. Okay, so excellent, excellent action. The lockup on this is a little late, but remember, this knife is quite old. It's you know it was used when I got it, and I've used it quite a bit since that time, and so you would expect a little bit of, of break in on this. But the other thing I will say, this knife is much newer. It hasn't seen a lot of use. It's fairly late as well, and I've noticed that a number of ZTs with the stainless steel lock bar insert have a later lockup, and, and I think it's designed that way because you don't have to worry that much about wear, okay, about the lock wearing in when you have that insert. Okay, number one, you can replace the insert. Number two, steel on steel does not wear nearly as quickly as steel on titanium, and even steel on titanium does not wear quickly. So uh, a late lockup is not a big deal, because for it to move even further is going to take a really long time, okay? Uh, and the other benefit of a late lockup is you know you've got a very secure engagement. You don't have any concern about this knife closing on you. And this knife is very tight. Now I will say this, this pivot, like the pivot on the 0562 and a couple of other um, ZTs that are floating around right now, um, it's, not, it's not captured in any way, okay? These pivot screws can just spin freely and they do spin freely. And so after a while, unless you, the best fix I've found is plumber's tape, wrap some plumber's tape around the screw and then insert it and you probably won't have an issue. That's been my, um, that's what's worked best for me. Uh, and so that's one warning I will give you. This pivot, if you buy an 801, likely, you may get the odd one that doesn't happen, but likely it's gonna have a pivot that will come loose over time on you. And so you'll have to, if Loctite works, that's fine. Loctite has not worked for me. I've had to use plumber's tape uh, to get these to stay put. All right, so that's lockup and deployment. Let's move on to the handle. Uh, the handle, as I said before, I would prefer if it was just straight titanium like on the S110V version, uh, but otherwise it's, it's very plain and comfortable. Now, I would not call this a combat or tactical knife and so the lack of traction is not the end of the world. A little jimping here on the spine might be nice, but you know, that, that would kind of mess up the smooth, clean aesthetic of this knife. Okay, so I, I totally get it. Um, it is a, a reversible clip to both sides, um, and the, the grooves are primarily for looks, okay? They're not really adding a lot of, a lot of grip, a lot of texturing. One thing you could do, since, since this knife is, has been uh, modified anyway, you could put a different finish on this part of the handle that was a little grippier, okay? You could, you know, take a, put a really rough finish on this that would, that would grab your hand a little bit. Um, that, I'm not going to do it, but it would certainly be an option. Uh, the pocket clip is very good. It's a nice deep carry clip, and I do prefer... Yeah, I don't have any standard clips, but you can see how, you know, it's just about right. There's a little bit of knife exposed, and if you put a lanyard on here, by the way, the lanyard hole is plenty large enough for 550 cord, which is always a plus, but if you, 
If you uh, did put a lanyard on here, it would just hang out of your pocket nicely. There's just a little bit of knife showing, which to me is just about what you want. Okay, so what are my overall impressions on this knife? Um, I, I like the knife in general, okay, and certainly I think if you, if you like the way it looks, uh, you won't be disappointed by any of the features or any of the functionality, okay? It does flip extremely well. Um, probably some would argue it's the best flipper from Zero Tolerance, and, and I, I'm not going to totally disagree other than to say my 0560 is very, very smooth as well. Uh, but great action, okay, well built. The fit and finish is, is good. Um, the handle has no traction, so if you are the kind of person who's going to use your knife for a lot of things where you're going to be sweaty and dirty and will be, you're worried about dropping it, maybe you'd want to look elsewhere. But if you need, here's where I think this knife fits. If you need a knife or you'd like a knife that kind of has the look and feel and finishes of a gentleman's folder, but has the thick titanium scales and very robust blade design that will give you a lot of strength and durability, then this knife is a pretty good combination of those two things. You know, this is a knife that you could carry and it looks quite nice. You could carry it to church or in slacks in the office, but then if you really needed to do some hard cutting tasks, I think it's up to those challenges as well. So it's a kind of a nice combination there. Now for me, generally I'm gonna move in one direction or the other, right? I'm not gonna to try to be right in the middle where this is. I'm gonna say, hey, if you wanna be a hard use folder, be a hard use folder. If you wanna be a gentleman's folder, be a gentleman's folder. Uh, this does kind of balance those two things out. And there are other knives that do a good job of balancing that I really like. The, the Cold Steel Code 4 is a good example. Uh, this knife, uh, as I said, I, I like it. There's a couple little things. The handle could be just a little bit bigger. Notice if I take a full four finger grip, there's a lot of wasted handle. Look at all this up here that I can't utilize in any way. And so because of that, um, my the butt of my hand is off the, the back of the handle, even though this is an eight and a quarter inch knife, which is which I would consider a, a medium folder. You know, it's not huge, okay? It's not the size of say, the uh, the cold steel, but another knife that's exactly the same size is the 0560, and look how much handle is sticking past my hand. Even though these knives are exactly the same length, compare how much of the uh, pommel comes past my hand here versus here, right? So you see the difference there? So that's one, so the two main detractions on this are the handle could be just a little more well thought out and the weight, it would be nice if we would minimize the weight on this just a little. You know, if she shaved off an ounce and added just under five ounces, that would be really, really nice. So, otherwise, yeah, I have no issue. I like the blade shape, I like the, the functionality of it, uh, I like everything else. Uh, I even like the look, although as I say, I feel like this is kind of going for a very clean, smooth look. It could be even cleaner and even smoother. There you go, guys. I hope you enjoyed the video, and we will talk to you soon.